And let's start with the first one. Why we are having point charges? So the very first thing that I'm just discussing is point charge. That what is a point? Point, we can say mathematically that it is a sphere whose radius goes to zero. And from this we means that the surface of it and the center of it will be exactly the same point. Like there will be no difference between the surface and the center. And that's the reason that we apply this law on point charges and not on macro bodies. For macro bodies it will be an approximated result or the result which will contain error. But for point charges, it will give very accurate result. Let's see. Let me explain this further. If, for example, instead of point charge, I am having a big charge, a macro charge, and it's a big charge here. And here is also another charge, which is a big charge here, not a point charge. Now, as we know, the charge is distributed all over the mass all over the body the charge is distributed so what we will uh, see here that if the charge is here at this point if the charge is at this point and it is interacting with this point then the internal distance between these two is this much but if the same charge portion of the charge is interacting anywhere else let's say for example at this place or this place or this place then the distance will not be the same and it will be somewhat like this or up to this one and so on and that's the reason that we consider the charges as a point charge so the distance is between their centers they don't have any surface. The surface and the centers are the same and that's why we just stress on the shape of the charges or on the size of the charges is point charges. Otherwise, if it will be having an internal radius, then our calculations will not be right. Now the second thing, the second question that we focus is that mutual force. What is meant by mutual force? Mutual force means that it is their mutual force. It is the force which is between them. It is not the force which is exerting by one charge and the other charge not like that one it is not like a partnership force it is a mutual force for example to understand this one we say that if this charge is one coulomb and this charge is one coulomb then we don't have any problem but uh, the force will be just like we will calculate this one from this relation but if for example this charge becomes 10 coulomb and this charge is 2 coulomb. Then the question arises, which of the charge is exerting more force? And the answer to this one is that it is the same force. None of the charge is exerting more. It is the mutual force between them. Like 10 coulomb and 2 coulomb, then the force will be just 10 into 2 and it will be 20 coulomb. Out of this 20 coulomb, we can't say that charge 1 is exerting more force and charge 2 is contributing less force to this total force. So it is not like this. And that's the reason we use the word mutual force. Now if I come to the third one, the third one is that this is an inverse square law. Inverse square law means that this is 1 over r square. Then there arises a question that why not it is 1 over r or why not it is 1 over r cube 
r y not 1 over r4 and so on means is if it will be an expansion of a function then why not the other values are possible or whether it will always be 1 over r squared so the answer for this is no it depends on the geometry of the charges how the charges are being arranged and how many charges are there for which we are finding this interaction force like for example if we are having one charge and it is interacting with the other charge then it is inverse square relation but if we are having a quadruple then it will be not 1 over r square quadruple means the two dipoles are combined then it will be 1 over r4 similarly if our geometry will change like our geometry is such that now we are having instead of point charges we are having line charge like charges are on one line then in that situation we will have the field equal 1 over r and similarly if we are having cylindrical geometry then the field will be somehow different and uh, when we consider the infinite sheet of charges like a surface charge charges are on a surface then even there is no dependence on R and that's the reason that I told you that this is not to be inverse square law always but it will depend on the geometry on the number of charges and how they are being arranged so this is inverse square law reality that for this very specific geometry we are having 1 over r square involvement and now come to the very critical question and that question is k why the value of k is so accurate and how we come to know that it is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So, uh, Coulomb calculated this one very accurately. And you know about his experiment, the torsion balance, and with the help of which he was calculating the force of interaction. And it was a completely experimental thing like he didn't derive this equation from something it was completely an experimental result now why the value is so accurate the reason behind this one whenever we are having the direct proportionality laws then we use the straight line equation and we utilize the slope here for example if I'm having, um, let's say I do consider, I do consider a coordinate system and a coordinate system is such that on this axis I'm having Q1 by Q2 over R square and on this axis I'm having F, the force. Now, there the relation for example goes like this and now I will calculate the slope of this one and the slope is somehow like this means touching at one point here then I know the straight line equation this is actually x with us and this is y and we know that uh, y is equal to mx plus c. If the intercept we consider is 0, then we have y equal mx. Now we have this y equal force and this is k and this x is q1, q2 
by r square let's say we keep we keep the value of q1 and q2 constant we are not changing the amount of charge then it will be just plotted f in 1 over r square will be plotted and we will find the slope of this relation like we are just doing the calculation one another 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 and we are having some data points and then we find the slope of that one and it will give us the value of k the next we do keep one of the charge is constant and then varying the things and generating some data points different measurements we do and we plot it again and we get the value of k similarly keeping this one constant changing this one and so on we do change here the x values and we note the f value over there and then we plot the slope then we find the slope of that one so after so many calculations the coulombs were the coulomb was able to find out the value of this k and that's the reason that it is it has been mathematically determined from this one then it is very accurate and even if we do the experiment now we are having the same result now the very first thing means we are going to the next question and the next question is that why this thing the force is inversely proportional to the permittivity of free space so understand this one that for this proportionality for this proportionality uh, let me write that f is proportional to 1 over epsilon naught. Now, what is epsilon naught? What is permittivity of free space? From its name, it is crystal clear that this is permission. Permission to what? Permission to the interaction lines. Permission, permission to the feed lines. So, how the feed lines are passing through from one charge to the other charge while passing through this medium this medium is free space if for example means these lines these lines will be just changing if we change this permission but why it is inversely proportional why it is means the more the permission the less will be the force because it is inversely proportional then why this thing is happening uh, like for example uh, we i will give you one example in the end as well and it will clarify the things more like there are 10 lines going and out of those 10 lines two lines are obstructed and it goes there so the permission is less but if for example 8 line goes there and 2 lines remains or they are obstructed uh, although it is not like this one but I am just saying in very simple words then the permission will be more then when the permission is more it means the two charges will be interacting very easily with each other and the force is supposed to be increasing the force is to be more but it is the opposite of it it is 1 over epsilon naught so the reason is that for this one let's consider let's consider uh, a situation in which we are having uh, let's say two plates here these are uh, plates of charges let's say on this one i'm having positive charges and on this one negative charges so in which direction the electric field is the electric field is directed along the positive to negative and now we consider that let's say we are having some 
we are having a material here and that material is having some atoms these are those atoms which are inside that material now in this atom we know that we are having a positive core and we are having a revolving electron in all of them and the field basically is directed along this one from positive to negative Similarly, here it will be, let's say the electron is here and the field is directed in this direction. So there will be random direction. When we place this material inside the electric field, what will happen? The positive charge will actually attract the negative charge and repel the positive charge this positive charge will be repelled while this negative plate this will be repelling the negative charge and attracting the positive charge so what will happen we will have uh, a picture something like this inside this one the atom will experience something like this that it will distort and minus will come here plus will come here and the field will be now in this direction so this field is external and it is in this direction but as much as this field or this lines or this interaction goes into the material then what happens the material polarizes and the material internal field is just opposite to this one and that's the uh, reason that the more this one go into the material the more will be the opposition to this one so the more the field lines go into means more they are permitted more will be the resistance and that's why this force is the permittivity here is inversely proportional to this one and it is unlike the magnetic field and when we will cover the magnetic field situation then this uh, that is the permeability of v space and it is directly proportional and it is not causing any opposition but it is a very straightforward permission